My name is Ramson, and welcome back to Spell Rogue, where we're going to be playing as Zar. Let's have it, then. And we'll be using the C loadout. There's a couple things that I want to do in this episode, but first, let's note the C loadout. Signature spell is Mana Splinter. Accepts any die two times a turn, it will split it into two. There's also Searing Heat, three countdown, two times a turn. Uh, apply two weak, increased by one for each dice spent. And then Sharp Spark. Four countdown, three times a turn, deal four damage and apply one rupture. So specifically, this loadout for Azar makes me feel like this would be a really, really appropriate time to try and get cast a single countdown spell with 20 plus dice invested in it. Because oh, Azar has the has the synergistic support for that. But here, at the very least, we already have a spell that splits dice into two. So that's ultimately what I'm going to try and aim for. I don't really want to take bloodletting just because it makes it so easy to start just collecting uh, more synergies in that direction. Turn one, receive four sap. I mean, we typically want to weaken people on turn one. We already have the, the searing heat. So that might be one of the easier ones to take rather than escalation. On turn one, receive five rupture. Penance, Decrepit, Obstacle, Diminishment, Mage of X. So, what, I'm two over? So I could take off Obstacle and put in Condemnation on turn three, receive one curse. Destroy random dice when you have more than five. I mean, yes, I could just keep investing them along the way. That's one way to manage that. But I do feel like Diminishment plus plus, remove one charge from all spells every third turn, gives me the ability to set up for a third turn where I have some depletion. Hmm. I think I can do this. So on turn one, we receive four sap. We lose two max health whenever we collect a spell. Every third die rolled receives vex, lowering the value of all of the die when you use it. Diminishment every third turn, remove one charge from all spells, and then condemnation. On turn three, receive one curse. On enemy death, gain two power with the hymn book there. There's also sunweave cloak on health loss, gain one banefire, and then finally the phoenix pendant. I mean, realistically, the hymn book is the one that I probably want to go for. It's on enemy death as well. It's not on, you know, lethal, which means that minions dying still contributes to it. Which makes it really, really useful in certain elite fights. So the plan is to get as aggressive as I possibly can this turn. Grand. Uh, let's develop... Some additional mana through the mana splinter. I want to rupture twice. And then pre bake two dice in searing heat. So the next die I put in that gives me the ability to weaken an enemy for five. Oh, that's exactly what I wanted. I want to split a one so that I get an additional. And now I have the ability to invest that single one in Searing Heat, weaken the enemy, and then I can Sharp Spark four times, uh, four times, three times. Sorry, I was just about to use a four and I got so excited that I said the word four. And this turn, the enemy ought go down. Easy. One of the fastest opening fights we've ever had. Uh, hemorrhage. Apply X Rupture. Ooh, interesting. It could also upgrade to give a random spell negative X cooldown. No, see, the thing is, I want to have more countdown on my spells and then invest more die into them, is the thing. Hurt. Deal 10 damage upgrades to 15. Wound the next dice rolled. 4 to 6, 3 times a turn. And then in a rage, gain a critical. Uh, honestly, gaining critical for one big hit seems like it'd actually slap hard, so I'm happy to take in a rage here. 
We're also going to be going to an event early on. Uh, there's a shop nestled between two elites later on, which I'm also very interested in hitting. Um... Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to take out the backline target this turn. Realistically, that means I should invest in weakening it so that I don't just take six damage. I'm also going to gain in a rage and invest towards the next sharp spark. Two sharp sparks, the first one having critical will give me the ability to take out the living embers there. Perfect, and I gain two additional power from having done so. Unfortunately, the Dread Triant is just going to continue thumping. Oh, that's really annoying. That hand otherwise... Oh, well, I mean, I, I wasn't going to be able to sharp spark the enemy three times this turn anyway. Never mind. Uh... Unfortunately, I take some lumps here. Hey, boy. Single one. Gain some inner rage and then the sharp spark for 13. Conflagration seems like a perfect spell for this. Invest a single two. Two times a turn will allow you to deal two damage two times. Also, all spells gain plus one to their countdown. Uh, we can also upgrade this to either do more damage or to give another hit as well as more countdown to the other spells. I like it. Let's take Conflagration there. Hit up the event. 60 gold for a Ring of Block on turn 1, gain 1 Fortify. Fortify being plus 1 block gain from spells for the rest of the combat. I honestly expect that not to be that good for us. I'm going to take the Receive 7 damage to gain 60 gold Black Market here. We've got a shop after the first elite. Oh, it's going to be good. Uh, I can take this shard. I would like to use this either to give Inner Rage the ability to give us power, because Inner Rage, although I don't want Inner Rage to, you know, heighten its countdown as much, uh, Inner Rage isn't a piece that I'm going to be keeping in the build for that long a period of time. And I suspect gaining one critical and one power and then using Conflagration will be an especially useful source of damage for us. Mm. And upgrading Conflagration to make all of our spells get plus two to countdown right now might be a little premature. I might even sell Inner Rage in the shop after this. Really depends on what I find. I'm so glad that you're not attacking on turn one. Should I use Conflagration for this turn? I believe so. I just, I don't think this fight becomes easier for me to manage by investing in weak. I think if I pre-invest in rupture to set up for another conflagration, I might actually be a lot better served. Although they're all going to be attacking this turn. Ah, one of them's giving me sap. Okay, never mind. They're kind, they're kind. Um, so what am I looking for this turn? Realistically, I want to do Sharp Spark, then I want to gain Inner Rage, and then I want to Conflagrate the back line. 
Uh, I can do that whilst gaining an additional die by using my splits first. Yeah, I legitimately think the best strategy for me taking the least damage in this fight is actually... Getting very aggressive right now. Maybe I'm wrong about that, though. I don't know. I'm feeling worse about the idea. Well, kind of pot committed to it right now. Oh, boy. Thankfully, it's okay. We'll be taking him out this time. I mean, with a roll like this, how could we not? Yeah, I really should have just killed some of the chumps there. That would have helped us out a lot. Okay, so we pick up our rewards. Gold, a branding tonic. Three marked on a target. Kendall, Reclamation, and Hurt. I don't really want any of these is the thing. Which means I could just sell it in the next base for 20 gold. Yeah. I think I will do that. Finger of Justice. Every 10th spell attack applies two days. Nope. I'll be taking the Shonda. Um... Let's head to the shop and see what's going on. Hello. Nourish Flames is exactly the kind of thing we want for this build. A three to a six, one time a turn. So on turn three, we won't be capable of doing this, unfortunately. Plus two countdown to target spell. Also, roll a one and a, sorry, roll two one to twos. God, that, that is so unclear when you have to say it out loud. Roll two one to twos. Did you know that 1-1 was a race horse and 2-2 was 1-2 and 1-1-1-1 race, 2-2-1-1-2? Um, I could give it an additional charge or I could get it to roll additional die. I don't want both of those. And then we have Phlogiston and Sap Life Force here as well. Runic Infuser, also on turn one, will grant us one additional charge to all countdown spells. I don't tend to count... The uh, cast countdown spells multiple times on the first time. Silver Herbic, reduce health loss by one, and then there's the Enchanted Cloak as well, gain 15 block. I'm taking Nourish Flames. I'm selling Kindle. I kind of want to sell in a Rage already. Like, I know it's an important part of my scaling right now, but I also don't want it. <laughs> And I am also going to need to free up a lot of money. So I want both the Enchanted Cloak and the Silver Hobbit. On turn one, gaining 15 block when I'm sapped before on turn one? It's too good. I can't turn that down. I'd have to sell two more spells to get it. Two more. Oh, boy. Two more spells. That's, that's a lot of spells. I don't think I can do that. I feel like realistically, I should probably get the additional damage on Conflagration right now, just so that I have some damage to get started with. I'm really sad to do that, but I do think I need to. I mean, realistically, I upgrade it to deal damage three times if I want it to be closer to my finisher, and I have a lot of strength gain already, but my strength gain relies on the enemy already having units die, and that's difficult to do when I've just got a sharp spark. Nourish Flames, rolling an additional time. Seems good. 
I'll take that. I'm not going to take any potions here. Another elite battle time? Oh, hello. I can easily weaken you on turn one. Uh, I could use this three, in fact. Hey, now I've rolled a two for the sake of conflagration. That's good. Single six is already enough to weaken the enemy entirely. that. Should have invested the sharp spark first. <sighs> Thankfully I still have the ability to before the end of the turn. Um, the enemy is going to be attacking next turn though, so I'm going to pre-bake some searing heat in order to weaken them again. Searing heat prevents any incoming damage. Nourish flames on, I guess, searing heat. That really like sharp spark to stay castable. I strongly suspect I should still cast sharp spark and conflagration this turn. Oh, unfortunately, sharp spark passed its infection to conflagration, which is going to make this much more contentious and cost us some additional health. Alas. Go spend health to make health. <laughs> Annoyingly, I'll be taking another four damage at the end of this turn because I don't have the ability to take the enemy out. Um very close but just up in many different ways but we'll get you on the next hit something like that I I finally want one of those spells like fireball Ooh, phoenix spells roll four ones love it maybe I take a reroll here Falling Fire, the ability to deal damage to targets straight up and their adjacents as well, it's its not bad. Taking that and then giving that a... Uh, taking that and giving it a shard immediately, which I just got from this fight, would be good. But I don't want it. Blech. Incinerate deals a bunch of damage for countdown, kindle, rerolls. Blood Vortex. Put a three in this, it'll roll three die for you. You'll also lose some health. I'll take Blood Vortex. Charge Necklace, turn one, deal 15 to a random enemy. Take the shot, expand the slots. Pop the Blood Vortex there. Come on. Come on. Reroll. Splinter the four. Oh, cool. We actually do get the ability to use conflagration multiple times this turn. Um, four damage and eight damage four times would actually be enough to take out this guy. Easy turn one right there. Growing Visage. Well, at least here we do have a quite positive uh, 
addition to this. Six countdown twice a turn, gain two block, increase by one for each dice spent. I will take that. I feel like I should probably take it instead of Sharp Spark. Just deal all of my damage with Conflagration. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's appropriate. Sanctuary. I do want to disenchant spells because I am losing max HP every time I draft a spell right now. And I think with my potions I will be able to get through this next fight. More than happy to watch you summon. Um, it's nourish flames on... Oh my god. I can't believe I just did that. I eliminated my ability to use the twos. Thankfully I rolled enough twos that I'm fine again. But whoops. Visage and Searing Heat, increasing their countdown costs. I can Mana Splinter these ones. And now I can invest... 5 die into Glowing Visage. It's ready to give me 12 block at a drop of a hat. In fact... I'll gain some power here. Some mana splitting. I'm going to nourish flames into searing heat, rolling a bunch more die. There we go. Including the ability to generate full defense here. I don't think I can do both of these, actually. If I conflagrate, the Glowing Visage will be out of my range. I'm going to roll the four ones. Allowing me to comfortably conflagrate because I really want to kill the chumps so that I can actually get reasonable power here. And I'll just be able to glowing visage for the full defense and I'll be able to prepare the next one with it having a much lower cost. That's great. Zaj again because the enemy is going to summon some friends and it would be really nice to be able to defend with a single die. There's our single die full defense. And in fact... If I nourish flames and roll a two, that's the end of the fight. I do think getting the damage up on Conflagration so I have the ability to get it off the ground is really, really impactful here. Smoldering Torch. Roll an extra die each turn. Each turn also apply two Ignite to random spell. People get in the fight. The worst that's going to be. Stuff is splintering. The first three is rolled in uh, split. Is Sorry, the first three rolled each turn is split into three ones. 
I'm not going to want Blood Voltex for long in this build. And I want as many ones as I can get. That sounds great, baby. Uh, Glowing Visage. Upgrading this so that when it's depleted, it also rolls three one to twos. I'm not going to deplete Glowing Visage very often. But when I do, typically on turn three, it'll be really helpful. Great. Waddle on onwards. That's another relatively early shop right there. And I do like those. I do like them. Shop. Shop of all shops. Give me direction. Oh, there are those ones. That's a lot of threes. I almost feel like I should use Blood Vortex. That said, what would it really even accomplish this turn? Invest this two into Conflagration, vexing a three down into another two, giving me the ability to use it in Conflagration as well. The enemy is going to be multi-attacking next turn. I can tell this because I know the enemy, but also because they're applying Power Trap, which gives them power when I roll certain value of die, which means that the most valuable thing they would be able to do is a multi-attack. So I'm going to prepare for the ability to invalidate even a really good multi-attack. It's not even a multi-attack. Um, uh, whoops. Um, cool. I mean, if it's not a multi-attack, let me worry. In fact, I have exactly enough to block for 20. Ah, here's the turn that Searing Heat was being baked for. That said, I didn't give me enemy much power last turn, so it's not like it was desperately required. Don't ignite conflagration. I need to use that to kill you. Um. Yeah, currently I'm just going to take damage if I kill you this turn. So I'm going to do that. Because I suspect I'm going to take more damage if I don't. And maybe that wasn't true. These are only ignited for one. I just could have waited for the next turn. Hey, okay, focused heat. One week for each charge left. There's Falling Fire again, Combustion. I do want to really take a reroll, but again, we've got a shop coming up relatively soon. I'll take Falling Fire. I'm going to replace Blood Vortex with Falling Fire comfortably. Oh, literally, I got a shop in two spaces. Good. What's our ritual like? Target attack spell gains four damage this combat. For the sake of Conflagration, that's pretty good. It's eight more damage. There's also Astral Attunement, gain an additional charge, target spell, giving us the ability to probably nourish flames another time. Gives us the ability to double up on the depletion of Glowing Visage on turn three if I really want to. I don't. I don't think I really want to. Okay, let's think of where we're going as well. So Arcane Infusion would be a sick build to drop, uh, or a, a sick piece to drop into a build where I am using, I think it's called Wild Blaze Orb. Four countdown, one time a turn. Deal four damage to a random enemy for as many dice as you've invested into this. Because then every new die is another multi-hit, which is just carrying another four damage with it. I think I take Arcane Infusion, and I think that's what I'm looking for. Fragmentize definitely goes into a build like this, and Fragmentize also gives us the ability to gain the power. The only problem is Fragmentize is going to be splitting twos or threes, and I don't roll those, because when I do, I don't. Instead. Uh, I will be taking Fragmentize. 
We will also be selling Blood Vortex. On turn one, apply five weak to all enemies with the Stupefying Stone. Because I have Decrepit, and on turn one I'm receiving Force Sap, I really think anything that I can do to make the enemies weaker on turn one makes me a lot stronger in general. I'm going to take Crystal Snort as well. Gain three power. And that's just so that if I find myself in a really tough position against either of these elites, I can still push through. Hello, Jin. Thankfully, I've got Falling Fire in this build, otherwise the Jin would be a little more tough. Got a single two for my Conflagration. I think I should use Glowing Visage to block this 12 this turn. But it comes with the full awareness that if I used this next turn instead, I would have also depleted it. Unfortunately, the Jin's only attack as well, so I don't really have much of a better choice. Gain some block from the Glowing Visage. Ideally, I'll roll a couple twos. I roll a lot of twos. Unfortunately, that conflagration revealed to me that I'm not going to be able to take out the right gin this turn. I'll take two damage and the illusion will die. Let's invest this four into going visage and rolling some new die. Love those. Oh wow, these do count as enemy deaths for the sake of the conflagration. I was not necessarily clocking that yet, but now I am. Perfect. Ah, they're enraging this turn, yeah, this is... This is when things get real serious. Get a bunch of twos on the field. Just to protect against the worst possible outcome of next turn, I'm going to pre-bake the hell out of a glowing visage. Noting that if I get a truly tragic and awful roll, I will still be able to launder them through the glowing visage, courtesy of the fact it will deplete on my first cast. And there's a two. That's all I needed. Uh. 
Yes, no, I see the problem now. I'm going to need to use Falling Fire. Or get real lucky with my conflagration. Um, main problem here is Falling Fire costs more than I can afford. I can generate, like, one less than its cost right now. Which is kind of funny. Actually, I think I just developed the rest that I need. So that's 5, 6, 11, 13, 15. Yep, that's 18. But also, I only actually kill one of them with that. And I think I still go with Conflagration. Because I can take out two of you with Conflagration this turn. Better chances that way. Oh, hello! Hiya! Flame Surge! Hello! Welcome! Flame Surge! Take two twos. Two times a turn, it'll give you one charge, and then you'll get two block for each charge left. And there's also Pyre. Gain four block for six countdown, two times a turn. If four or more die, uh, four or more door dice is spent, excuse me, my brain is not working. Four or more dice are spent. Thank you. Uh, we'll gain two power. Yep. Chaos Crystal on enemy death. Roll a die. I do like rolling forwards like that. I do want to drop like Pyre and Fragmentize immediately into the build. Split this five with a mana splinter. Okay, I get a fragmentize fragmentizable. going to take out the frontliner right here, giving myself two power. We also roll an additional die as it turns out. And now we've got this three that's been fragmentized. Or rather, is down to the limit where it can be fragmentized. One, two, three, and then four makes Pyre give us some additional strength as well, and just in case I will pre-bake some glowing visage for next turn. Start out with Conflagration on this turn. Follow up with Nourishing Flames into Glowing Visage. with the final one, and that's exactly enough to block the 18 incoming whilst dealing as much damage as I can, setting up the possibility of... Oh, never mind, I was about to say the possibility of killing with Conflagration this turn. That's not happening. No, you more. Can only cast... Oh, boy. 
I'm literally not capable of casting anything this turn. Oh, that's really, really, really awkward. I need to set up for my turn threes a lot better. I can't just take 15 damage on turn three like this. This is... Uh, poor form, I believe is what this would be called. Yay, I rolled another two. That's enough to kill the enemy. Regeneration. Mutilation. For a three countdown, wound the next two dice you roll and roll two die. I'm seeing so much for the wound build and I'm, I'm specifically saying, no, stop testing me like this. Let's take a reroll here. And none of these work appropriately for the build I'm working towards. Just take Fickle Barrier and run away. I'm going to use the Regeneration Potion in this fight. Thankfully, I'm fully defended here on turn one. Healed this turn, eh? I can do 18 damage to someone. I should. And then start preparing the next pyre. Let's get that regeneration ball used. I'll heal five this round. They'll heal six. Shit, boy, they're all attacking again. Must they? actually hoping that I would end up with a three there to put into Nourish Flames. Didn't realize until I was way too deep in the turn that uh, I'd already given up the ability to do that. Let's take out the one that's going to heal himself if he hits us. able to defend next turn. So let's bake a little bit of glowing visage for ourselves here. Perfect. I'm already defended as well. And I have the ability to throw my conflagration out on the field. Next turn should be an easy crone of death number one down. Yeah, yeah. There's the twos I'm looking for.
just enough to fully block with Pyre, as well as gain a bunch of power whilst doing so, and that should set up for a much easier turn to conflagrate next. There we go, those are the twos I'm looking for. Conflagration! Town of Mana Iron Guard and Inferno. Unfortunately, these are really not what I'm looking for. Reroll. Flame Storm. Want to buy Snow Blood Vortex and Reclamation? I mean, look, I'll take it. I don't want it, and I'm not going to use it. Amulets. Every third turn, split a random dice into two. I do want smaller die, typically. Bingo. Sounds like it goes perfectly in this build. the other two I need. Frontline it down, roll an additional die. I'm gonna go with that. Four, one, two, three. Free back the hell out of Pyre and Glowing Visage for the next turn, when they're actually gonna give me block. Wow, never mind, the enemy doesn't even need me to block this turn. That's so many ones. That said, if I can't kill this turn, I should really prepare the next turn, turn three. Blowing Visage is already ready to give me 18 block. Perfect. Oh my god, they're all silenced. With the one that isn't silenced, and then I'm gonna gain glowing visage with that, and then that rolls some die, and I get a single two, but that's all I need, baby. I'm pretty sure that if I try and put any of these into Pyre, it will immediately mute because it's a countdown spell. I'm yeah, there we go. I don't even get to cast it! Ugh. That's okay. I did that knowing that I wanted to just see how that happened. Just a little bit more in the glowing Sash, and there we are. We'll conflagrate and kill you next turn. Perfect. A blast pot, some gold, and eruption. Hmm. Six countdown. Two times unrestorable. Deal four damage. Increase by four for each unused dice. So if I split my die a bunch of times, I could just throw this at the enemy's face. Like 20 in a single instance. Sure. I just, I guess Fragmentize is what I'm using least at the moment, but that's only because I don't have the ability to gain power from it. If I could gain power from that Fragmentize, it'd be the first ball to call each and every time. Let's 
do 36 damage to this big bad boy here. You'll give me one mark, but whatever. And then another 30 to this one. Okay, eruption's sick as hell in this context. Could you not roll a two? It would have... Well, I mean, it wouldn't have finished the fight, but it would have got us close. Oh, what a turn one. Beautiful. Heat stroke, double weak on a target. There's also the gathering flames. I mean, gathering flames. Here's a pretty good way to deal with my wands. Is it more efficient than Pyre? I mean, I guess. Because Pyre doesn't get better the more dice I spend in it. It's just four and that's enough. Should definitely sacrifice the spell here. Time to get rid of Falling Fire. I'm gonna need Eruption in this fight just so that I can try and get through ahead early so that I can start gaining additional strength so that it's much easier to keep power, sorry. So that it's much easier to keep this build going. Hello, Pox Springer. Let's use his three and nourish flames on the glowing visage, rolling three additional die. Mana splinter a bunch of times. Thirty-two damage. Fourteen out there. Fourteen afterwards. And then I'll start preparing for a glowing visage at some point. Hopefully on turn three. Which should be fine, as long as I kill the head this turn, then the next time I will be attacked will be turn three. There it comes, my additional power. Beauty. Again, I will prepare Glowing Visage as best I can. for its upcoming ordeal of needing to protect me entirely itself. Wow. No attacks this turn. What disrespect. Unfortunately, I'm weakened this turn, so I'm not going to be able to take out the Black Hydra Head with a single conflagration anymore. I'm going to cast Pyre. And Glowing Visage. And I'm going to start working towards the next Glowing Visage as well. I'm going to have more turns where I actually need to defend. 
Evidently just not these turns, though. Pop a Nourish Flames. There's all the conflagrations I could possibly need. All the conflagrations a baby soul can hold. One, two, three, four, and another two. It's more power. Heck, I'll even gain more power from my additional die. Thank you. Dreadstone, I think, did that? No, Chaos Crystal. Dreadstone is the boss relic that deals two damage to you after you kill an enemy. Conflagration is already off the mark. Ready to take an enemy out. all of these rolled quite low so that's the ability now to cast pyre gaining even more health i'll lose sorry even more health even more power and i will lose one health this turn the conflagration is getting pretty close to just tearing folks asunder itself mm, it's pretty close to power from Pyre, and then I'm going to use my blast pot, conflagration to take an enemy out. Oh, did it have to be a one? That inglowing visage for a later turn. Only one more head needs to go down, and I'll be healing back up to full by the end of this combat. it is. That's the two we're looking for. Conflagration! And that'll give us back some health, some gold, a shard, and there's the dreadstone. I was talking about it. Uh, roll an additional dice each turn. On enemy death, receive two damage. Shrunken Mana Stone. This is on odd turns. The thing is, my hard turns are odd, but also even, because it's every three turns. So turn three is hard and odd. Turn six is hard and even. And then finally, Amulet of Sacrifice. Roll an extra dice each turn. Each turn, receive one sap. I only have one source of block, and it's big. So I think Amulet of Sacrifice is probably the least likely to impact me. I'm not sure what I want to do with the rest of this build at the moment. Alright, it has been many hours since I spoke to you last. I am recording this now at the end of the day, whereas I was recording it previously at the very start of the day. Oh, the magic of a pause button. So, we were lamenting, I think, about this extra shard and what we were intending on doing with it. <clears throat> In the meantime, though, I have come up with, I think, possibly a better idea. And it's largely based around Fragmentize. And it's based around the fact that Fragmentize is, in terms of the value it provides a run, it's the ability to split twos and threes into ones. That's what it says it does. Great. However, I already split random dice in two every third turn. And also, if I roll a three with the Staff of Splintering, it'll more, uh, immediately get split into threes. And also, my twos already have a socket they want to go into through Conflagration. So then what value does Fragmentize provide? Oh, it's the power it gives you. 
Well, but I already have Pyre to give me power. And anytime I kill an enemy, I get power. And I also get power, sorry, I get power anytime I kill an enemy and I can use eruption to kill those enemies without having to use much power. Okay, so what does Fragmentize give us? What's well, this other upgrade, isn't it? A two to a five, it can split into ones. Because a five in my build right now is garbage. A three or a four easily goes into Nourish Flames. A five? Where does it go? I don't want it in Pyre. I kind of want it in Eruption, but that's eventually gone after the unrestorable charges are off. So Fragmentize, I want to upgrade and I want to give it a larger range here, but then I need to figure out what spell gets lost for it. And it feels like the most likely culprit is Mana Splinter, but Mana Splinter is also just the ability to generate two more ones in a turn, which is really impactful for this build. Hmm. I can't get rid of Glowing Visage, that's my only defense. Pyre isn't really defense. Yes, it gives us four block, but it basically doesn't need to say that. All right, I'm gonna open an additional slot. I will put Fragmentize there and I'm gonna upgrade Fragmentize with the first shard I get in the next floor. I feel pretty confident about that now. Thank you for entertaining my silly little rat. Well, <laughs> playing silly little games on my silly little channel. <laughs> uh, we got shop after two more elites. Seems the best time to for it. I'll be all caked up on money by then. Terrific position here for eruption. front enemy is frenzied so they will actually start doing damage as I start casting more spells on this turn um, so do I actually want to use eruption first see I think so Maybe, no, this two is gonna go into Fragmentize, giving me an additional die. Then I can pop this five into a Mana Splinter, and I'm looking for any split here. Yep, that's fine. I just wanted something to put into Nourish Flames. Uh, so Nourish Flames will accept this three, and it has to do that before I use the two. This is gonna increase the countdown of Glowing Visage, as well as roll of three additional die. And then I can use Mana Splinter again to develop a new die. And then it would take four die off the board at a minimum in order to use Eruption. Honestly, I feel like I'm actually probably better off defending with Glowing Visage and then just throwing two Conflagrations on the field. So I will. Actually, I'm already defended, of course. Worth remembering. Did forget about that 15 block. This even leaves the front enemy on a multiple of seven. So the first conflagration next turn takes them out and rolls an additional die and gives us additional power. And we're also set up for a big glowing visage on this second turn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I am gonna have to use that this turn. I should still set it up for casting next turn as well, though. Use this conflagration build the frontliner. Roll an additional die. Happens to be another two. Love it. Huh. 
And then I'll pre-invest in Eruption. Fragmentize this too when everything is already a one, so it can't get lowered by the Vex. And now I'm just investing in the Glowing Visage for the next turn. Cool. Should make this a breeze. Thank you for splitting so many die. Give the additional damage to Conflagration, which I'll cast twice here to take a unit off the field. I'll cast once here to not take a unit off the field. I forgot. Well, <clears throat> let's use Eruption. Thankfully, that will help cover me. Going Visage defends us for the rest of the turn. Gives us a whole mess of ones to invest into Pyre, even if I don't want to. I have more than enough power to finish out this match already. Let's split a six. Yeah, I just need something to use Nourish Flames with. I should finish Pyre before I use Conflagration, but is it really gonna make a difference? I'm doing 30 damage twice. The answer there is no. So now I'm looking for the largest defense I can get out of Glowing Visage to end this turn. And that'll be pretty easily achievable. <clears throat> Blocking for 30 every turn? Such as is required in the Arcanax fight? That seems far without our reach at the moment. I might need some sort of healing tool mid-fight. Uh, mana Splinter, it's sure that gives me a easy usage of Nourish Flames. There we go, those are the twos I'm looking for. I am still looking for a damage spell that will actually get more powerful as we invest more die into it, because I still haven't achieved investing 20 plus die into a single countdown. These are not they. I, if I am going to continue looking for that, I think at this point I do need to just accept that I'm going to need to reroll. These still are not they. I'll take Infused Shield. I won't want it, but I will have it. Plus three value to all die is actually a threat to me. <clears throat> That's a mean thing to say to me. Could I use it well at some point? With these? Honestly, not really. And Vitality, roll a wound die. Really, the only utility that has for me is an additional die on that turn. What would be good? Oh, um, Last Ball. Last Ball would be insane here. Would give me the ability to nourish flames multiple times a turn. Would give me the ability to fragmentize multiple times a turn. Conflagrate even more times in a turn. Mana Splinter? I think it's Laugh's Ball I'm looking for here. There it is. <clears throat> Negative seven countdown to a target spell. Yeah, I mean, 
mean, theoretically, yes. I mean, like, realistically, what is this? Red Candle says, cast Eruption on turn two without investing any of your dice. Is turn two really my problem? Or is it that I'm going to get spanked by Arcanax? Last spell. Roll a last spell, one, two, three. It gains energy on spell depletion, and it has nine charges. And a last ball, when spent in a spell, adds X charges to that spell. You then remove last ball. So I will roll possibly a last ball three, and then put it into Nourish Flames, which will have three more charges that turn. I can't believe I didn't see the utility in this before. It's bonkers. Oh, uh, Staff of Splintering for a shard? I was hoping that was 150 monies. Disenchant Flamestorm for 75 gold. Flamestorm, the one that I refuse to use? Uh, lose Energizing Potion, gain Cell Ward. That's not good for us. I'll take the money. Uh, I'm really pinning a lot of hopes on that shop up there. <clears throat> Fingers crossed. Do you just kill me? No, you don't. But turn three is going to be a... Hmm. Real one. Depleting Presence. All spells restore only one charge each turn. Which means on my third turn... Uh, diminishment. Is going to remove that charge from each spell. On my third turn, I'm not going to be capable of casting anything. At all. So... Should I consider trying to kill you before my third turn as my highest priority? I definitely need to get as aggressive as I possibly can this turn. It just comes down to whether or not I'm using the Branding Tonic or maybe the Crystal Snort even here. I will be using the Branding Tonic. Take 50% more damage for the next three turns. I'm going to be opening with as many eruptions as I can throw at this enemy as possible. So I'm looking for something like a Fragmentize on this three, a Mana Splinter, and then Nourish Flames on Glowing Visage to give me even more die to work with here. And now if I invest in Eruption with just the six by itself, actually, I even have a Mana Splinter for one more. If I in uh, invest the six into the Eruption by itself, that's already 44 damage becomes 66. I can expect to do something similar next turn. And then I also have two conflagrations this turn. Yeah, I see it. I see it. I don't think I need to use the Crystal Snort, which is really important because I want to save that for Arcanax. Uh, so I only need two of these twos to go into conflagration later which means I invest one of them and then four ones into a pyre to increase my power before I use conflagration. Twice. And I'm actually going to pre-invest in eruption for the next turn because if I do get a good split, I'll just blow the enemy up. Ooh, the Staff of Splintering, and I roll another three to Fragmentize with. This is not good for you, buddy. This is a bad time. For you. The Lost Bull is finally up. Anyway, time to kill the opponent. Nice damage. Combat rewards, we get some gold, we get a spell. Can't use Extract as my health gain in the final fight, unfortunately, because there's only one lethal, and if I get it, I already won. Iron Guard accepts any die, on a 1 to a 5 gives you power, on a 6 gives, sorry, on a 1 to a 5 gives you block, on a 6 gives you power. Wildfire Explosion, none of these are what I'm looking for still. <clears throat> oh my god. Can you not give me just anti-synergies? Furnace, six countdown, one time a turn. Other spells, 
Lower a countdown for each dice spent in Furnace. No. I need to raise their countdown and then invest die in them. Combustion. Deal 18 damage. Reduce countdown cost by two this combat. No! Meteor. This one's the funniest. 12 countdown, one time a turn. Deal 24 damage. Decrease by two for each dice spent. Good lord. Tablet of Anger. On any spell depleted, gain a fury. Now, the thing is, I do want that. I just don't think it's worth. Because, like, I... I expend Fragmentize, Nourish Flames, and Mana Splinter all, so that's, you know, three Fury before I use Conflagration at all in a single turn. So that three Fury would carry twice six damage. And then it would do it again. No, it wouldn't do it again, of course. Because Fury is cleared on usage. Eh, Tablet of Anger actually doesn't seem that good for us here. That's sort of my word, I will extend the range of Fragmentize to a 2 to a 5. Alright, Mana Hunger, what she you want? I need to make as many die as I possibly can. Let's fragmentize this 4. Um, I do want to just drop a giant eruption on your head. Which, unfortunately, I have to do earlier than using Nourish Flames here, because the only Nourish Flames comes from either the 6 or the 4. I'm using the 6 for eruption. If the 4 is used in Nourish Flames, then the 6 needs to go back into eruption with another 1 as well. This will now give me the ability to invest in Conflagration twice. Which I do want to do. But there's a slightly riskier method of investing in Pyre to gain the power and then using the Vexed 4 to nourish flames. And I'm just hoping to roll enough twos to use Conflagration twice at the end of that. I don't think I'm that scared of the Mana Devourer. I don't think I need to be taking this much time here. We'll pre-invest in some defense. <laughs> I rolled nothing but twos. As it turns out, that would have been a good play. Alas. Ooh. Love to fragmentize a five. That's so many die. A single two and a four into eruptions and 40 damage out on the field. Roll my last full. It's a one. It's not what I was hoping for, admittedly. If I wanted to get that, it would have been while Mana Splinter was still up, but unfortunately Mana Splinter was required to get that, so. That's the way the world works. Let's defend with Glowing Visage, and I'll be doing that twice. I have twos now. So sure, feel their wrath. That will be enough here? Yeah, even with curse. Okay, cool. The additional damage to Conflagration, blow the enemy up. 
feel sad that I decided to spend so much time on the enemy despite the fact that they were made of paper. Convalescence. Six countdown. Three charges, unrestorable, heal four health. Is that what I'm looking for? <laughs> Volcanic power, hello. This, this is what I'm looking for. Volcanic power, two countdown, one socket, uh, one charge. Lose two health. Gain one power for each dice spent. That's what I want instead of pyre. Ooh, boy. Ooh, that's a good piece of this kit. <laughs> Thankfully, the enemy is weakened, and I get 15 free defense here, so... <laughs> the Orb of Infinity's scary turn is already nullified. This three in Nourish Flames, give that to Volcanic Power. Uh-huh. Do I want to do two conflagrations right now? Give it even more growth potential? One, two, three, four, five. Give me six power for two health. That seems a fair trade to me. Uh, next turn is non-aggressive, I believe. No, actually, the Orb of Infinity can hit me, but I think it's a single hit. I need to start looking up any charts of attack patterns they have for these enemies, because I'm starting to internalize them manually, but that's error-prone. More error-prone than I want to rely on, at least. So speaking of, I'll set up a glowing visage for the next turn as well. Ah, uh, yes, of course. Actually, I did know this. This is the vampiric turn. Um... I think at this point, Conflagration is probably a lot better than Eruption, and I don't even need to cast Eruption. Just summons and unstable for the enemy. I do want this 6 to become a 5, so I'm happy to use the Vexed 3 and Nourish Flames, but I should use this 2 first in Conflagration. There's another two for our conflagration as well. Got to fragmentize. Conflagration? Yes! This is what I wanted to see. Lots Bull, if it rolls a two or a three, is ridiculous. This two goes into conflagration, allowing me to cast it two more times this turn. I'm gonna cast it one more time. Taking another enemy out. I'm making volcanic power uh, more and more costly all the time, which actually increases its potential. Let's dip on that potential a little bit here. Gain ourselves seven power. If I mana splinter a three, I definitely end up with a two. But I can use that two for another conflagration. Do I dare block again this turn? I think not. Because next turn is the third turn... I was trying to prepare that for next turn, which is what I was about to say. Oh well. Oh boy, that's actually going to be a real problem, isn't it? Two. 
37, and then... Alright, I need to give a target spell additional charges this turn. Which spell bails me out of this? Because Conflagration is getting you down to 42 health. I did Eruption first, which I have to. I'd be doing 37 with it, and then afterwards I'd be dealing just short. I think I actually put myself in such a bad position here that my best play is using Crystal Snort. So I do 40, and then 62 after that. <sighs> Oof. That's okay, I'll find better potions in the final shop. Flamestorm's back. Oh, hello Roaring Embers! Nice of you to turn up! Eight countdown. One charge. Deal two damage. Increase by four for each dice spent. I'm gonna take it, but I'm not happy about it. Let's remove Searing Heat. Dark Heart or a Shard. I'll be taking the Shard. I'll go to the shop and now it's time to make a bunch of decisions. Incinerate, Incendiary, and Zeal of the Sun. Unfortunately... Well, Zeal of the Sun. Would this maybe be a better defensive tool for us? Countdown 5, one time a turn. Destroy all dice. Gain 6 block for each dice destroyed. I do invest a lot of 1s into... into gaining my defense from Glowing Visage. If I just blew him up. Oh. Twisted Scimitar. The first attack spell each turn also applies to weak. Um, yeah. I, it just seems worthwhile. Deidam of Power. On turn one, gain one power. And then the Damned Shield. Each turn, receive one power and one sap. The power stays. The sap goes away. I'm going to sell the infused shield, gathering embers, furnace, and yeah, pyre. I'm going to take an iron skin potion as a priority over the other potions that are apparently higher rarity, but I think less useful for me. Zeal of the sun, zeal of the sun. Do I really believe in zeal of the sun? Nope. I don't feel like I have excess die every turn. Especially on turn three, when Glowing Visage is critical for us. Here's an alternative question, though. Do I lose anything by just purchasing Zeal of the Sun right now? And I don't. Uh, organic? Sorry, organic. Volcanic power. I can give it an additional power for each die spent. That seems absurd to me. Absolutely. Eruption is probably already outmoded. I was just about to say, Eruption doesn't come into the boss fight at the end. But I don't... I don't even think it's necessarily a good choice in the current fights. I do want to fragmentize this wall, but I also want to nourish flames. Decisions, decisions, decisions. I'll fragment. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, admittedly, I actually think the right play here is use Eruption again, take out the frontline target, who is a minion, but does give me two power and rolls an additional dive having done so, then nourish flames, volcanic power, and keep going from there. Oh yes. 12 power feels much better. Fragmentize the four and then use the vexed four in nourish flames. And now I have wands as well as a last bull three. Last bull three is not my favorite thing of all time. I won't, I won't lie to you, but it is extra mana splinter. That's not nothing. Granted, it's. Pretty close. Oh, you know what? I should have used the Vexed 2 to lower the Last Ball from a 3 to a 2 and then invested in Conflagration. Then I actually would have just been able to blow up the door from beyond, I believe. What, what it's this is like uh, the video game version of uh, L'Esprit de Scalier. I think of the right thing at the exact moment when it's no longer viable. In the origin being you think of the right thing to say in an argument uh, as you hit the stairs, I believe, Scalier. The stairs leaving the social situation that you made such a faux pas in. Let's pre-invest in a glowing visage for a later turn, just in case all hell breaks loose and I'm not capable of just killing the enemy with a conflagration. There we go. Great fight. I mean, I might as well re-roll because none of those seem relevant. None of these are relevant either. Skip the reward. Move to the sanctuary. We're gonna trade you some max. Or rather, a spell for some max. Uh, did I want to free a shard from any of these? Nourish Flames is really good. Volcanic Power is really good. Glowing Visage is necessary. <laughs> uh, conflagration. Admittedly, I would love to be using something other than Conflagration at this point. Actually, isn't impossible. So Chaos Bolts, let's just hear, just hear us out for a second. Chaos Bolts is a six countdown, twice a turn, deal two damage to a random enemy three times. With the amount of power gain that I have, hitting an enemy three times versus hitting them two times is drastically different. And a Chaos Bolt that hits four times is even more so yet again. So, what do we do about that? I don't think Zeal of the Sun goes in the same build as Conflagration for the simple reason that I need to cast Conflagration before I use Zeal of the Sun, because Zeal of the Sun is destroying all of the rest of the die. And if I use Conflagration before Zeal of the Sun, Zeal of the Sun will cost so much that I will have to invest so many ones into it, because they're typically ones by that point, that it will destroy all of the value I otherwise could have gotten from Zeal of the Sun. Which means that I can't substitute it in instead of Glowing Visage, which means I can't just free up the shard from Glowing Visage. All of this to say, 
Do I blow up conflagration? Yes. I think the answer is yes. I think the answer is yes, and I think the answer is then give Chaos Bolts the ability to hit multiple times. I think this build is no longer about investing many die into one single thing. It's about the ridiculous power I can get out of volcanic power and translating it into four hits randomly against the same target Arcanax. Do I think I could utilize Zeal of the Sun in a desperation move? Sure. Roaring Ember's less so. That's going to get really outclassed by all of the power gain that we have. Really quickly. Let's not forget, a lot of our artifacts also push specifically in the direction of power gain. Yeah, I get two power on turn one already. I get one more power every single turn from the damned shield. And obviously, volcanic power is going to be cast with four as its countdown. I'll invest four die into it, which means that it's going to be giving us eight power a turn as well. I do still want to attack early. And I should prepare a glowing visage for next turn. Also, removing conflagration removes the only non synergy between chaos bolts and the rest of the build, which is Conflagration would make Chaos Bolts more expensive. When it is a countdown spell that doesn't want to be made more expensive, thank you very much. It's a lot of sixes. It's not really how I roll. I do prefer fives, so why not get some? Let's fragmentize this five out. For all of the perfect volcanic power it can generate. Do I roll Lots Ball this turn? Yes. Yes! It rolls a three, which splits it into three Lothspell ones. I'm going to give Volcanic Power uh, two more uh, charges. And then I'm going to invest Lothspell into it so that I can gain power multiple times this turn. I do big defense. Not as big as the incoming damage, but big defense. And, oh my god, you're kidding me. I'm literally one pip short of getting the enemy to their transition point. Fine, I will use the shade power die. It's important to get them to the transition point. Um, let's put a person there. 
and then I will zeal of the sun to the other five. There we go. There's some more block. This will prevent the enemy from breaking one of my spells, and it will not put me, crucially, a full turn behind the enemy immediately. Next turn, I would have been able to do a little bit of damage, and then I would have just had to full defend again. Um, let's increase the damage of Chaos Bolts. Pull our last spell this turn, just because I would love additional die. Um, Ask Glowing Visage, get our ones and twos here. There's Chaos Bolts for 42 damage four times, as well as two weakness. Actually, I don't think I need the Iron Skin Potion that turn at all. I think I need it this turn. It's okay, I can just prioritize Glowing Visage. I only need to do a little bit of damage this turn anyway. Let's invest that five immediately. Unless I want to nourish flames. No, I don't even need to gain more power at this point. I just need to live. Okay, hang on. I have 11 die here, which means I can't cast Glowing Visage twice. So, if I invest five of these into Zeal of the Sun, and then get four block for each of the rest of them, is that better? That's six, six by four? Yep, that's better. Okay, this is why it was so crucial that I attacked on that previous turn. This turn, all I gotta do is use Chaos Bolt twice. Granted. That currently looks a little more difficult than I thought it would. I wasn't cursed last turn, was I? I can, I can, I can, I can, I can do something, right? So far, it feels like these twos have to go into Chaos Bolt. And then I need to split ones until I can power up via Volcanic Power, gain four power. Which means 48 to a random enemy four times, which is still not lethal. I'm not going to be defending against the enemy this turn. So it's this or nothing. Is the only hand that could have stopped me a hand that has... no value above a 2? Yes, because otherwise it goes into Nourish Flames, Nourish Flames charges into Volcanic Power, I cast it, and then I do any damage and I'm done. Or, I just blow up the enemy.
I need 12 points of pips this turn, and I'm currently capable of generating two more than is currently represented. Wow. This is kind of heartbreakingly close. The reason it's heartbreakingly close is because I made mistakes in this fight that I am well aware of. Uh, that I did not think would have mattered. Alas, they appear to have. I get saved by my last ball? You know, I think last ball actually could have saved us, but I would have had to invest my first two into Fragmentize. rather than into Chaos Bolts. And then another two into Chaos Bolts. Then I split via Mana Splinter. I invest another two into Volcanic Power. I take two damage from that. I take another two damage. I take two damage from the Fragmentize in the first place. So I'm literally on one health, which would actually help with another, uh, another one of the achievements. After that, I've gained four power. And I've expended three of our spells, which gives us last ball. And then I roll last ball. And because I've already expended a two that otherwise would have been in chaos bolts. One, two, three, four. I would have need to roll a five on that last ball for it to make a difference. Heartbreaking. All right. Take me, Arcanax. Oh! Defeat. I wouldn't have necessarily called it swift, but certainly a prosperous one. We did get a lot of money there. For the moment, my name is Ibn Rhapsody. We'll get that achievement done on a different day. The name of the game has been Spell Rogue. Top left has been the series playlist for all of my content on the game past, present, and future. YouTube recommendations down below. Streaming past are the names of the people so generously supporting the Republic on Patreon.com slash Rhapsody Plays at or above the thank tier. And a special thanks to this episode to moms. Hopefully you all have been enjoying yourselves and hopefully see you all next time.